But what I'm going to do in um, today's part of the video is I'm going to fit a standard Futaba servo inside the boat, have a push rod of some kind coming out here, and then use um, a normal kind of servo arm mounted on top of the arm that's already here in order to better drive it. It is going to mean that I'm going to need to cut a small hole in the boat here. I don't think that that's going to cause me leakage problems. If it does, that's something that I will deal with once I've tried it. So the first thing is to is to undo this nut at the top of the rudder and one of the features of this is that when it's done up tightly it's designed not to move very freely and I'm going to need it done quite tightly so the first job to do is going to be to take out the existing self-tapping screw And because, because um, I'm going to be mounting this servo arm on top of it, it's going to need to be slightly deeper. So I found another self-tapping screw that hasn't got, you can, see, you can see here, that's actually got a washer in the top of it. This one here hasn't, so it will actually sit down inside it. And I'm just using a normal Futaba servo arm. I did file off the small raised area and if you look at the one here on the servo you might just be able to see there's a tiny kind of lip where it's raised, I'll just, it's really hard to see. And so that will allow it to, to sit flush. But the first thing that I need to do is to enable the rudder to move more freely by making making this pipe that, that it sits in slightly shorter and I'll just use the Dremel for that. Just clean out the hole. And that should be good and we should have a much freer rudder. It means that I can no longer lock this in place in the in the way that I used to. So that's that part. For the next job I'm going to need to attach this arm on top there and the way that I'm going to do that is I'll start just by loosely putting the screw in at this end and then and then then I'm just going to use a small self-tapping screw to hold it in place Right, that should do the job. I'm going to be using some rod and the rod I found is about one point, it says 1.64 mil here. So one and a half to two, to two mil rod. Now that doesn't quite fit through here. It's a little bit tight. So I'm just going to make the hole a tiny bit bigger. I think that I'm going to want to use the outside of the arm. Let's make sure that that fits. Perfect. 
Well, in order in order to in order to get this to to locate to locate onto there, I'm going to be using my trusty Z bender, and this is a marvelous tool. I've used it so many times over the years. And here and here we have the perfect Z bend for the end of it. So what that's going to do, I'm actually going to have the wire coming up from underneath. So let's push that in. Like so. And that's how we're going to be. You'll see that the angle probably a little bit hard to see, but the angle is actually sloping downwards. So I'm just going to Nip that up slightly with a pair of pliers. Right, I think I'm about happy with that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to need to do is to drill a hole in the back of the boat for this wire to go through. So this is this is now moving moving quite smoothly, staying in place nicely, and I'm going to need to decide where to put the hole for this control rod. Looking looking at it from the side, the control rod is going to need to go pretty low down, and it's going to need to line up with this hole here. So I'll start with mark it, so it's going to be around there, but much lower down, probably around here. I'm nervous that a draw bit will just slip, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to certainly at least start the hole off with this. should be okay. Now if I just thread this through and it's much too long at this stage. That seems to be coming out in about the right place. Right, that seems to be working fairly smoothly, but we have more direction over here than when it goes this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly enlarge the hole so that it can move completely freely. Having done that I've got free and easy complete movement in either direction. And I feel quite happy with that. I don't think that water coming in is going to be a big problem for this boat. So that's that in there. Now moving to the inside you can see that we've got the rod here to be able to move backwards and forwards and what I'm going to want to do is to mount the steering servo actually in that block on that block there that we previously stuck the speed controllers onto. So <clears throat> I'm going to have all of that out. I'm going to mount the servo inside it and then I'm going to stick those back onto it slightly differently.
Now what I'm hoping to be able to do is to mount this servo actually in the box here so that it doesn't move around. And, and to do that, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna need to do is to mark out a hole to cut for the servo. So using my trusty permanent marker. Mark out a square and not forget not forgetting to leave enough room for screws to to screw it down with. That should be about the right size. Using a knife carefully and never putting my hand behind the knife, score out the shape. Try not to overshoot. Okay. Fairly brittle plastic, so I'm being careful. Basically, it should just break along the score lines. Just nibbling away a little bit of time. that is fitting in there perfectly. Now I wouldn't normally bother with the servo mounting rubbers and inserts but in this case I'm going to because there's quite a bit of vibration in the boat and I don't want any vibration interference so I'll just put those in. Right that's those all done. Good. Next thing to draw them out.
that's now firmly in place and I'm not worried about that moving around. I'm going to be using this for the for the um, servo end because it's going to give me a little bit of leeway because the one thing that I won't be able to do is to set the trim on the steering without messing up the speed controller so I need to get it mechanically right. The first thing that I'm going to want to determine is the direction is the is the direction of travel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this servo into the steering channel my receiver I'll sort the wires out later bye like so Make sure nothing's near the props, yep. And then just turn everything on. So when we're turning right, I can see that the servo is turning anti-clockwise. So I need to remember that. So the servo is turning anti-clockwise, which means if I if I link to the same side of the servo this will turn anti-clockwise so that's that way which means that I can link on to this side of the servo which is what I was hoping for next thing to do center up the servo as best I can And I'm going to need, and I'm going to need to establish the right length for the rod inside now. So I'll just pop this on. That's that. Take one of the screws. That holds this plate down. in there for a minute it's actually easier for me if I just screw it in so what I'm going to want to do is mark on the rod the place to cut it in order to give myself some leeway but for it not to be able to foul on the servo arm so I'm judging that to be about there Be able to thread straight in there like that. Right. So, so having having trimmed off the horns and moved to the inside on the on the um, servo arm inside the boat on the servo, we seem to have good movement each way, and we're able to set the trim slightly left or right in the water if we need to if I, if I had to I could make further mechanical adjustment but that all seems pretty good to me the next job is really going to be just reinstalling the electronics physically i.e. the receiver and the speed controllers using the double sided sticky tape Right, and there we have it. So, one speed controller over here, the other one you'll see on the other side, and the receiver now mounted on the plastic block where the servo is. Wires all neatly tucked away, and I used alcohol to make sure that the double sided foam tape stuck the speed controllers down properly. And looking inside towards the back, plenty of room able to slide the battery in and out because this control rod for the rudder is sitting over to one side so really I guess the only thing to do now is to program up the transmitter and take it on the lake and see what happens